So yes, this is how it's done. God of War Ragnarok not only is getting a free new DLC, but it's dropping it the very next week. I hope you're all ready for December 12th as Kratos is taking on Valhalla itself with a brand new and replayable adventure with unique twists, enemies, rewards, all inspired by the roguelite genre. So breakdown video incoming of course, lots of stuff to talk about and let's jump right in. Now the journey to Valhalla takes place after the events of the main story, so after the decisive battle against Odin and following Atreus' departure, acting as an epilogue in which Kratos takes on a deeply personal and reflective journey. Brought to the mysterious shores of Valhalla and accompanied only by Mimir, Kratos will enter its unknown depths to overcome trials within himself and face echoes of the past. Now, this last line, Echoes of the Past, is what got me thinking because, as users already pointed out, Greek-inspired music and Greek mythology can be heard and seen at various points throughout the trailer. Starting from the PlayStation cover, which sees almost the exact same pose and angle from the God of War to art, to the music heard throughout it, like this has an undeniable Ghost of Sparta vibe to it, all the way to the very Cyclops enemy at the end, so yes, we're absolutely getting new enemy types as well. Which all sounds very interesting, but if Echoes of the Past means fighting a representation of Kratos' past battles, maybe we'll get to see more enemies too. Who knows, maybe even gods from the Greek pantheon making some kind of cameo. I would definitely love to see that. I know it's a stretch, but somehow I feel like a big important battle is surely going to happen here, but I would totally love to know your opinions in the comments below. Now, for those interested in the gameplay itself, the Valhalla DLC blends in elements of the roguelite genre. So think of this as dungeon crawling, going through different, sometimes procedurally generated levels, fighting hordes of enemies and permadeath. However, in this version, Kratos will instead reawaken just outside of the doors of that level, so ready for the next try pretty much. You can hear Mimir giving him the pep talk in this shot right here, saying that this is all part of the process, so this is likely the death screen that we're seeing here. Now, from the trailer alone, I've noticed at least five different level spaces, some of which are clearly inspired from existing realms, even from 2018. Like, for example, one or two of these shots definitely remind me of the pre Fimble Winter Midgard, like the green grass and specific human enemies seem like a big enough hint over here. Others look like a bit Svartalfheim inspired, like this fight against this new flying bird enemy that we're gonna check in just a bit, but obviously there are both new as well as pre-existing thematically speaking locations, with of course the Valhalla being a new one that we can also see in the background. Now, each level will feature a combination of enemies, including new surprises, that will encourage you to master different aspects of your arsenal. The more you overcome these challenges, the more resources you gain that can be put towards permanent upgrades that both affect Kratos and Valhalla itself. So, at some point, we had this pillar with a fist icon at the top just before the level ahead, which might be a possible damage buff for Kratos during that level ahead, or possibly a temporary glyph that boosts certain stats and perks, as we're gonna see in just a little bit. Now, staple for the roguelites is that you'll also die a lot, and you're expected to do so often, as that's how you adapt and eventually overcome these challenges. So you will get to access all of your unlocked weapons and upgrades as well as skill trees up until this point, and that's why maybe it would be a good idea to go ahead and finish the game and maybe get a build going. We have a lot of build guides as well as how to get certain items on the channel, so go ahead and check those out. Furthermore, in one of these blog post screenshots, we can see Kratos can actually choose between two chests, at least in this case, from presumably the end of one of these levels. And I'm pretty sure that one on the right provides something related to runic powers, judging by its symbol, while the other one to the left might be maybe armor related, maybe giving us some armor powers. I know that armors are actually just cosmetics in this version, so we're gonna check that in a bit, but you know, I might be wrong on this one. Maybe it's like a specific power that gives us a certain upgrade. However, in their version, you must commit to a shield and a path of Spartan rage, for each attempt, meaning that you cannot switch up in the middle of that trial. So if you, for example, want to play Fury, Valor or Wrath, I think this will mostly boil down 
to the specific build you're going with and the synergies that are best for that, be it damage or healing if you're going with Valor, for example. So um, this is something that you're probably going to handle before actually jumping in those levels. But like I said, we also get temporary boosts as you get to overcome trials in Valhalla and explore its depths. This will make or well give you choices between temporary glyphs for which stats to upgrade, which perks to select, which runic attacks to wield, and so on. So each attempt will play differently based on the rewards you choose. That is why it is important to be wise in your preparation. Now, of course, they didn't name those resources and what they are called. Of course, we do know that there are going to be some permanent resources that will carry over and eventually upgrade us and make us much, much stronger, as you will see in a bit. Because this brings us to the difficulty settings. Now, Valhalla DLC has five difficulty modes to choose between, including a new one called Show Me Mastery, each, of course, providing increasingly better rewards. So early on, you're likely going to start at a lower difficulty until you get accustomed with the challenges, progress a little bit, and even get some upgrades for the character, which will then encourage you to try out the next tier of difficulty, which in turn will provide you even more rewards. So this is the gameplay loop you're looking at right here with the roguelite element. So just think of the trials, but on a much bigger scale than we had up until now. Now, in terms of enemies, we've seen both a selection of returning as well as completely new ones. So we do have those different Draugr, Midgard Raiders, Elves, and even the Aesir, like the Enyarhar. So these are something that are making a return, but we also have at least two or three new enemy types. So one of them is this giant bird creature that we haven't seen before. It seems to be a combination between the dragons and the draki we already fought in the base game, at least from its moves. So it does a similar flyby charge like the dragon, but its finisher move reminds me a bit of the draki way of biting. Also, there's this more berserker king looking enemy. I'm not sure we had it in the base game either, but it definitely seems inspired by that. So kind of like a slower brute that's really uh, maybe annoying to fight. Who knows? And obviously the big cyclops at the end, clearly Greek inspired. So that's why I'm saying and a lot of people are saying we might get to see more Greek elements in here too. Now, in my opinion, I think they should play relatively similar to the trolls we already have in the game. So big devastating moves, but slower attacks. However, the Cyclops might have in a few surprises for us because swinging that club definitely seems to be different compared to the way Berserkers and trolls just attack in this game. But on top of that, it might be also a bit swifter. So this might require us to be a bit more on our toes or, you know, just be more reactive at everything. And we also had this screenshot with Kratos fighting some sort of Jotunheim creatures, kind of like a wolf slash cat hybrid. So definitely looking forward to getting wrecked by um, this pack of enemies. Again, really hoping for some returns too. Maybe Valkyries. This is Valhalla, so in the end we should maybe see at least one or two more Valkyries. Who knows? Um, yeah, I would definitely love that. But I mean, if there's any other enemy you would love to see, let me know down in the comments. Now, another important thing on a final note is that armor in Valhalla is for appearances only, so you can freely choose and customize your favorite look, mix and match sets, and so on. So this might be the reason why we saw that armor icon over the chest. Maybe the powers from the armor set is something that we can then choose and mix and match from the chest that we get at the end. Who knows? Um, and finally, like I said, it's a separate experience from the base God of War Ragnarok, so you don't actually need to worry about going in without certain upgrades, equipment, or story. However, Sony Santa Monica recommends completing the story first as to avoid any spoilers. And I mean, it's definitely worth it. It's a very good one. But yeah, the DLC will drop for absolutely free on December 12th for all PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4 owners of the God of War Ragnarok games. So obviously around that date, I'm also going to follow up with a ton of guides, a new gameplay, and hopefully cool new stuff that we're gonna see. So if you wanna stay tuned with that, definitely make sure to subscribe, activate the notification bell, and also leave a like on this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.